All right, so now I'm working on the next prison book, or secure book. This one does not have the Wi-Fi module. So I ordered a newer one. I don't know if this one's going to work or not, but I, I cut it open just to make sure it was the right one. So I got a new one here that I'm going to mount onto this board, but I also had to order the level shifter, which goes right here. So those two can get moved into there and I'm hoping since this is not the exact same module but I'm hoping the BIOS doesn't cause me any complaints with it now I have the only way to get this in here is to do a reflow right I could use a heat gun but there's so many BGA's nearby and things like that I'm actually going to experiment with this board knowing I could lose it but I'm going to take this board to the work to my work to the shop and I'm going to run this to the professional reflow oven. So we're going to flux the, these two areas here. And we're going to just go ahead and get this stuff mounted. And we're going to reflow it. And hopefully it works. No guarantees. But I'm hoping it works. But the thing about that reflow oven, it's going to reflow the entire board. So what I'm likely going to do is run this through a couple of preheat cycles first using the leaded profile so I can drive all the moisture out of it before I run it up to full lead free reflow just to make sure that we don't kill anything right all of the solder we need to make this this work is already on the board because they used a solder paste stencil when they manufactured these and that paste stencil already had solder on it so this is everything we actually need to make it work and the, this board was never wave soldered so everything on this board was reflow soldered from the factory which means it's safe to run it through the oven and nothing's going to melt and here's the reflow oven so this is a professional infrared machine designed for reflowing these boards i got it on the lead free profile right now um actually no let me take that back it's on the leaded profile. I'm not going to change profiles yet until I, you know, I, I have to preheat this board a little bit, cancel it, so I, so I can drive the moisture out before I actually run a full reflow because I need to do that so when I go to reflow this board for the first time, it don't, stop, it don't start popcorning from trapped moisture if you get my drift. So that's why these components have a bake time once you open it beyond a certain point because you need to be able to um, reflow these components like this Wi-Fi module for example so once you open these you've got less than let's see I think this one says I've got 168 hours I just opened it so yeah we got to do this quickly so I'm gonna get this in the reflow oven and we are gonna run it so what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure the lead free 217 profile is loaded now this is specific to the machine so we're not going to save anything we're just going to load it so all that's done this is android based by the way all right so it's going to run the 217 profile um i did a couple of heat bakes to try to get this board which you can barely see in there um heat soaked to try to dry the moisture out of it. Then we're gonna place the components on it and hopefully reflow this thing. And crossing my fingers it actually works because I have no idea if this is actually gonna work. Okay, so I just wanna point out a word of caution. So the original component that went right here is a UM3204. And the UM3204 has pin one right here where that circle is. A little white circle well that one's no longer available so i replaced it with this lsf 0204 rgyr um, we're going to see if it works i'm not 100 sure but i want to point out that the pin scheme is different so the pins themselves are the same but where they put the dot is in a different orientation so this dot if you try to line it up the same way it is on there it's not gonna, the pins are not gonna be in the right spots. So you're gonna have to put the dot on this one, on this corner, 
instead of that corner because they changed the scheme with this one. You'll see that when I get the reflow done, but that's exactly what has to happen. And the Wi-Fi module, this isn't the original one that went in this machine. This is just one that I'm experimenting with. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we'll see. So we gotta get you mounted on here and we gotta reflow it in. I got my flux pin. This is what I got on hand. I don't know if it's gonna work, but that's what we're gonna use. So there we go. Something kind of like that. So this is just barely sitting on there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the oven and hope like hell this actually works without destroying anything. Yeah. Well, here goes nothing. We're running the lead free profile and yeah. The only thing I don't like about doing it this way, this is the correct way to manufacture a board. But the only thing I don't like about doing it this way is the fact that it's going to reflow the entire board. The infrared heaters are at the top there. So it's actually going to run the entire board. So I'm hoping that chip is on there straight enough. Because, yeah, there's no going back now if it's not. So here we go. Flux is on there, everything should be good to go. So we're just gonna let this guy run. We're at the point of no return. We're at the reflow point. So as soon as it does this, it's gonna switch over into the cooling mode. At least it should. So it's now or never. That entire board just reflowed. The good news is if there was any bad solder joints, well, that's fixed now or ruined. We don't know yet, but I'm hoping this was successful. Otherwise, it has quickly become a parts machine. <laughs> and this is kind of my test unit anyway, because this was the one that I picked to kind of just destroy the board if I had to, to, to reverse engineer it. But I figured before I do that, I want to see if this works. And if this does work, I'll keep it and I'll do it to the other one. I don't know. There we go. Now we're cooling down back to target temperatures and this is the built-in lead free profile in this machine so here we go there we go now we're in the cooling mode we're nearing the end of our profile run so this machine here is a little weird that's an android tablet and it's connected to like an arduino inside here through an adb debug accessory style interface that android once supported i don't know if they still do but they did back in the 4.0 days, which is what this thing is running. Or it might be 4.1, 4.2, something like that. And it runs in kiosk mode, so you're kind of like stuck with that. But that's how they designed this machine. I learned a couple things here. The solder, it, it, that's all soldered down. But more importantly, the, refro, the reflow profile that's stored in this machine is too hot for this board. Because the SATA connector did not survive. And that's a reflow style connector. So my thought is that lead free profile that shot up to like 250C is not the right one for this board. But point is, I can always fudge around with the profile a little bit. But hey, the, uh, the reflow is done. <laughs> so I mean, the other possibility is potentially just using um a regular old preheater and a hot air tool to do this would be far easier but i figured i'd just use the big machine to see what happened because this board i wanted to tear apart anyways take the cpu and stuff off to trace everything out but i figured hey if this works great if not oh well so hey the only thing we got to do now is try it oh yeah the uh headphone connector didn't quite survive either but oh well so yeah, it didn't quite go so hot, but it is what it is. Um, that chip went on fine, but I am concerned about the Wi-Fi module because it looks like, judging by the alignment markers, that it may have floated over by one pin by the with the flux fluidity. Because um, I had that lined up pretty good before. So I am concerned with that, but that chip there is fine. It's on there, correct. So, yeah, that's unfortunate.
but the the hard drive does still fit in that socket just not it's kind of tight now <laughs> obviously uh but other than that i mean it's not it's not bad. The biggest thing for me is to make sure the BGAs didn't get bridged or anything like that. So, see, it, it, that machine I always use for leaded profile. And I've got that profile tweaked perfectly for all the boards that are running that machine. This is the first time I ran a lead-free board in that machine. And it did seem kind of hot. Like 260C, that's kind of hot. And yeah, sure enough... So I'm gonna if I run another one of these boards, assuming I didn't ruin this one, um, I'm definitely gonna have to tweak down that profile. So, anyways, I gotta get this set in here. Unfortunately, I can't just put this board back in there; it'll short out because I had to peel off the black plastic. So I'm gonna need to get some kind of tape or something, probably this Kapton tape, on this board to try to protect it from shorting out. All right, so here's the moment of truth. So we're gonna plug you in. I have no heat sink or anything on here at all. I just wanna see if it turns on. Do we even get anything? Well, we got a white light. Light's on. Let's see. Hold my finger on the processor, make sure it doesn't get hot. Yeah, no post. Oh, whoa, there we go. Holy shit, it works. Oh my god. I totally didn't expect that to work. No, it's not getting hot either. It works. Awesome. Okay. So now I can go forward with getting the BIOS reflashed because I need to do that. And I'll do that while the shield's off because it's much easier to do. Well, it detected the Wi-Fi card. Because that option wouldn't show if the Wi-Fi wasn't there, I don't think. Holy shit. It's working. There it is. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, this is why I hate working on computers sometimes. I put all that work into mounting and running antennas into the screen just to find out that they've changed antenna connector standards again. Because these are normally UFL. That's what I always get. Well, guess what? These newer modules, Wi-Fi 6 modules, do not use UFL. They use something different. Ah, uh, I swear. So unfortunately, it I didn't get any more footage of this project, which I kind of wanted to, but eh, anyway, so I got the proper antennas finally, so they did change the connector type when it came to Wi-Fi 6, and I didn't realize that at the time, but... As you can see in the photo, I got new antennas all hacked in, and I got those from Amazon. So, unfortunately, it kind of is visible through the screen, but that's not a big deal. But, anyway, so, as you can see in this photo, everything works perfectly fine. I've got it connected to the Wi-Fi. The signal strength is great. I didn't have any performance issues. I had, like, over 100 megs, 150 megs a second on that CPU when I was doing some speed tests. So, it was working fairly well. So, anyways, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and all of that fun stuff. And if you have a comment, please feel free to leave one. Until next time, guys. Thank you for watching.